just going to set my GPS on Strava, starting this stony batter walk. There we go. I did a three-year degree in, in illustration and graphics, but quite soon after, I just thought, I just feel I want that freedom. I just want to. I don't want a brief. I don't want. I've got a, a burning sensation that I want to kind of express myself through 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 the work. My art work took off in Cornwall, really, professionally. We visited friends in Cornwall that had just bought a chapel. And anyway, they showed us a couple of buildings that they knew that were coming up. So, and the first one that we saw, we looked in the window and thought, God, this would make amazing house and studios and whatnot. And then kind of sowed a seed about how we'd like to lead our lives. So everything kind of fitted into place. Got two galleries in about a week. I spoke to someone, they said, yeah, I'll give you a solo show. And then in the same week, I got a call from the London Gallery saying, yeah, we'd like to show you. So it's almost like everything kind of happened quite quickly. The work changed quite a bit. <laughs> Taking stock a little bit more now, and I just want to consider what the next move is in a, a little bit in terms of colour or what kind of motifs I might be putting into the work. Um, sometimes it's quite nice, it takes the pressure off just sort of just doodling in a sketchbook. It kind of brings out the subconscious a little bit more because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not thinking. And that's where you want to be, I think, quite often in the studio. It makes things very literal and sort of a bit tight if you're kind of thinking about it all the time if you just sort of start to attack things and let things happen naturally. Um, often something comes up and you think, ah, okay, that's where I want to be. You kind of develop techniques as you go along. They're actually marks that I would have made in a different way anyway, so they're kind of marks that were there in the work, but I'd set it up in a different way. So I used carborundum and, and um, ilmenite, which is like a mineral. I've got some options here to change that line with this stuff, and then it just, it takes, kind of takes the sweetness away. So, and instantly you've got something else that's happening and it becomes a bit of a habit, I think. <laughs> Creative habit, almost. Um, but imagine that on a large scale. So you've got like an, a four foot, eight foot canvas and then you're sort of piling it on big brush strokes and then you're pulling the canvas up so it's all, all that material sliding down. You're not always sure exactly what's going to happen. It's very exciting. I've never done anything for money, I don't think. I mean, I think it's great if you get paid for what you do, but actually there's just a burning desire for a lifestyle, I think, or, or something that's driving you, like an internal driver, and it's a creative thing. And then the other stuff I get a bit embarrassed by as well, the commercial stuff. But having said that, I've had shows where it's kind of nearly sold out or something, and it's been a wonderful feeling. You know, you walk into the gallery and someone's looking at your work and they want to buy it. It's like amazing. <laughs> This is Waikiki Island meets Cornwall. That's why we've got the Cornish names on the table and local greenery and so on. But for the moment, I'll introduce you to Mark Savage, our 2018 artist in residence, who is going to explain to us the shape of the wall. It's been a wonderful experience so far, six weeks in, and I've made um, a fair amount of work and I've um, been incredibly inspired by the surrounding. The name of the exhibition, as you may know, is The Shape of the Walk. I've experienced some wonderful walks whilst being here on the island. The unmade road leading there was the colour of honeycomb clay, and the shapes of individual stones have certainly informed several of my new paintings.
since being here, I've really found a huge sense of focus and purpose. And actually, I can't wait to build on that experience. On the walk, try to be as receptive as possible. There's elements of peripheral vision, you know, taking things in left and right while facing the walk. Literally just touching what you see and, and feeling it. The visceral sort of qualities come through, hopefully in a natural way. You can't force it, but it's kind of hopefully there. All the ancient sort of scarring on the land got an amazing sense of history. The geology of the place is um, has a kind of mystery to it that um, feels very compelling. And the colours, the texture, quite incredible. Twelve and a half thousand miles away from beginning to end, from Cornwall to New Zealand, is quite a difficult thing to get your head round. But also the sort of connection of almost coming full circle and trying to see familiar things in a different way. It makes you more receptive, I think, and more focused. And hopefully that's coming through in the paintings in the studio. I think the walk's finished now. It's been an incredible experience being up here at Stony Batter. Panoramic views from the top here are incredible. Um, it's been truly inspirational. All these kind of images have kind of filtered into the work in some way or another. The work has taken me on a on a kind of road that I was unfamiliar with, and it's been a creative journey from beginning to end.